Welcome on into Gold Sheet TV Week 16 preview. A little bit of a recap of Week 15. I am your host, Eric Pauly, with my co-host, Dan Alexander, at Newbie Talks on Twitter slash X. Newbie, let's get right into it. How was your Week 15? Um, I mean, from a fan perspective, it sucked. Uh, the Eagles, the fraud team that I told you the shoe was dropping on, has continued to drop resoundingly. They lost to Drew Locke, a.k.a. Tom Brady, on that game-winning 92-yard touchdown uh, drive. So, as a fan, it sucked. As a uh, as a better, it, it sucked as far as the sides go, man. Uh, last week, you tried to tell me, newbie, like, why do you come on here when we have full slates and find a way to step in front of bar none, the best team in the NFL, and some way, somehow, I take the worst of the number on Arizona – and it wasn't even that close. Like, sure, I could come on here and I could bitch about the fumble that should have been ruled correctly. And no, the thing was, that was never the right side. It hardly, rarely is the right side when you're trying to fade this 49ers team with how they're playing. Uh, and I won't waste time on the show complaining about, you know, going for two, not going for two. Washington plus the six and a half. That's a brutal beat for your boy. But, uh, you know, that's sometimes how it goes. It's funny. The week prior, I was talking about the great you know, two and a week that we had, you know, cash and tickets and plus money tickets at that. It giveth, it taketh away. We're still on a nice profitable run here, but uh, zero and two taking it on the chin last week. The prop was the saving grace. We hit the prop parlay with room to spare. James Cook flies over his posted total. So at least I saw one thing decent on the board. How about yourself, man? Yeah, newbie, we hit another double best bet with the Detroit Lions minus four absolute sweat free was awesome. And like you just mentioned, the prop parlay came through also sweat free. That James cook call on you was, was amazing. Cooper cup, uh, watched let him wide open for a tutty there. Um, <laughs> like you said, though, we're not going to be labor the bad beats. You know, we've, we've bitched on the show before in the past, but the Washington plus six and a half, I can definitely consider a bad beat, but the worst beat from that game, which was one of the premium picks for wager talk, was the over not getting home. Yep. There were like four different fumbles or change of possessions or going forward on fourth downs, like in the red zone in the first half, then a missed field goal in the third or fourth quarter, and then Washington not going for two there to put that over the total. That stayed under somehow. But got to shout this out. You know that we don't do a ton of touting on the show, though we work, I work for the Bull Cheat and we do have services. Please buy our stuff. Or we have great information and we win you guys money. So far in December, newbie NFL, a 30% return on investment, plus 22.17 units, 66.7 winning percentage in the month of December so far for the gold sheet. Hit another 5% best bet on Sunday with the Buffalo Bills. So we are absolutely rolling. We cashed a prop parlay. But let's go and talk about what's going to happen week 16. Newbie and I are going to split this episode up. We're going to be pretty brief about it because we've talked about the playoffs pretty frequently. But we're going to discuss one last time, realistically, who we think is going to make it in the NFC and NFC. Then we're going to talk Thursday Night Football. Then we're going to discuss the two Saturday games. Yes, before Christmas Eve, we have two Saturday NFL games. So we'll get right into those. But, newbie, let's start AFC playoff picture. We talked about this for a little bit. But now the big really news here is Cincinnati Bengals losing wide receiver Jamar Chase. We saw yep. Jake Browning really struggle without T. Higgins. Against a good defense, now he plays the same Steelers defense without Jamar Chase, who is you know better yep. than T. Higgins. Newbie, AFC quickly. Is it the Buffalo Bills time to get in? Are the Houston Texans getting in? Is it staying as it should be? What do you think is going to happen in the in the AFC playoff picture? Yeah, I think one thing that I definitely would caution people at this point of the time, and I do the production behind the scenes for Wager Talk today, good friend of the show as well, Dave Sherapan at Sports BK and Sig. He kind of went on Wager Talk today just giving the plea to folks that in these last three weeks of the season, what the sports books want you to do is go into the nice handle markets for them, and that's these future markets. And the thing is, is yes, it's only a three-week stint, so you're not tying up your money for all that long but the book will always prefer any extra hold percentage that they can get over the next few weeks here. So they want you to be betting these future markets. They are going to drop some low-hanging fruit for you at some nice plus money prices that you say, oh my God, I can get a, a plus 185. I only have to tie my money up for three weeks. So 
I would just caution people tread lightly when you're trying to prognosticate how this NFL playoff picture is going to shake out. It's not something that I do um, preseason. It's something that my cohort, cohort here, Eric Pauly, does one of the best in the business at prognosticating future markets and how to end up with a portfolio where you're making money. It's not my specialty, but uh, you know there are people out there who do it. But just a little word of caution before I talk about this AFC playoff picture that um, man, how many times has the year flipped where it's like the NFC is the real conference, the AFC is the real conference, the NFC? I, yeah. I mean, it has flipped flopped back and forth. And for me, as I just look at this board to the bottom of the board, the thing is, is it used to be for what the past four or five years, it was Kansas City and then everybody else. As I look at the top of the board here and you watch the Ravens play, while I'm very bullish on the Ravens, my preseason prediction for the Super Bowl was Ravens versus 49ers. It's not looking too bad here if you look at who the one seeds are. But when you look at the AFC, because I, I always like getting your opinion on future markets, does it feel like it did when it was Kansas City and everybody else? Like, does it feel like it's Ravens and everybody else? Or is it a little bit tighter in this, in your opinion? Because we're going to get the Super Bowl preview or potential Super Bowl preview this week uh, on Christmas Day. What a present for all of us on that one. So I'm wondering for you, man, um, you know, is, is it really Ravens and everybody else in that conference? Or, or do you think there is some more uh, jockeying a position that's going to be going on? So I do not think it's Ravens and anybody else. I think that there are four or excuse me, five absolutely legitimate teams in the AFC. That's the funny. one matchup that nobody is talking about, which I not I shouldn't say nobody, but everyone's talking about the Monday Night Football, Christmas Day, Super Bowl preview, one seed, mm -hmm. one seed. Should be a hell of an epic game. I, I cannot wait to tune in. But we're not talking enough about Miami-Dallas. The perception of Dallas, how it can change on a dime, deservingly so. Don't get me wrong. When you do beat the bad teams and you do you know get run on 40-plus times for over 200 yards, that's the sign of a weak football team. But – the Miami Dolphins, since getting Jalen Ramsey back, they have had one hiccup, and that was that Monday night football game against the Tennessee Titans, which I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt against because Mike Vrabel, over the course of his coaching career, has shown up in those similar situations, and he did it again. The Dallas Cowboys, from a talent perspective, still have a great football team. Like, go to your birds last night, newbie. They lost the football game, and at the end of the day, they, they had less points. From an every other yep. metric standpoint, outside of turnovers, which killed them, they are by far the better team than, than the Seattle Seahawks. Like, I am not completely out on the Dallas Cowboys nor the Philadelphia Eagles because of the recent loss, albeit the Cowboys was a terrible loss. But to a Buffalo Bills team that season long, again, the wins and losses are what everyone looks at. But metric-wise, they are one of the best teams in football. And the reason why they lost a lot of those games in the middle of the season is because they lost literally four of their best defensive players. Like, no team can really sustain four of their best players getting hurt. So, I don't think it's a great or bust. I think the Miami Dolphins are legitimate. If you're counting out Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, I think you're a lunatic. Um, the Cleveland Browns, like Kevin Stefanski, should be the coach of the year. He's not going to win it because of how they – there's a pretty good criteria. Like, the Browns were expected to be pretty good, so I don't think they'll win it. But then the Buffalo Bills, of course, are certainly legitimate. But – Newbie, one quick thing I want to say. So you mentioned what Sharapin did, and I missed this episode of Winter Talk today, today, but I would have loved to have heard it. Something I did, and tell me if this makes sense from an overall perspective. I know it's not something you dive into. But I took, at plus 194, the Buffalo Bills over 10.5 wins for the season, which means they need to win the remaining three games. And the way I see it is they're a 10-point favorite this week against Los Angeles. Okay, should be a win. They play the Patriots next week. I know New England beat them earlier, but that was a very, like, New England-type spot. This one will be in Buffalo, so assume they win there. Then, if they get to the Miami game, that could be a game against one Miami's backups or two even for the division, and there's just no way that the price will be Buffalo plus 192 based on how they beat them down earlier this season. So I made that bet basically, one, thinking it can happen, and two, being like, there's also a good chance to maybe hedge out and I could be holding the best possible money line ticket for the Bills versus the Dolphins in week 18. What do you think about that movie? 
Yeah, and honestly, going after that regular season win total, you're really getting at, you know, a a make or miss playoff at a different way. You know what I mean? And you're finding a way yeah. to get a little yeah. bit more plus money on it. And, and it makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. If you even just look at those last three games remaining, you laid it out there pretty nicely. Like every sharp in the world, we're going to do a little bit of a game preview coming up, so I won't belabor the point here. But every sharp in the world is on Chargers this coming week um, against the spread. Uh, they're not going crazy like we did and doing some money line sprinkles for what it's worth. I don't think many of them think that the Chargers are going to upset the Bills. But, yeah, you know, you never want to chalk up a win in the NFL. But that one really feels like it. And then the Bills getting to play the Patriots at home. Patriots, nothing to play for. Patriots already beat the Bills earlier in the year when they were really struggling. That's going to be a big-time statement game for them. And then you're really just coming down to um, Dolphins versus Bills in 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 that uh, in that final matchup there. So, um, no, I really like you taking that market and finding a way to get at it and finding the best possible plus money price at that. Because if you are going to do future things, um, that's the way to do it is find some nice plus money. The only time that I would maybe lay some money right now is um, – just taking in the NFC, the uh, the the uh, Niners versus the field. Like, you know, Niners yeah. only minus 110 to win the NFC. I don't see an NFC team that's beaten the 49ers barring something crazy or barring some injury. So, um, yeah, I, I think it makes a heck of a lot of sense to attack it that way. And I'm not going to talk you out of it. I think Buffalo is really playing well. I think the shakeup that they did in their coaching staff, that can go one of two ways when you have a solid team at this point in the season. Talk about shakeups in coaching staff. That's the team that they're going to be playing this week in the Chargers who finally fired a guy who should have been fired probably two years ago. But, um, you know, it can always go one of two ways. And for the Buffalo Bills, it's been only buy sign on them since that point when they shook things up, changed some play callers. Uh, so I I'm with you, man. If you're just asking them to get over that number, they're rolling right now. And I look at that schedule, I see two and one at the worst at the absolute worst. Uh, and, and I think, um, you know, that plus money that you're getting almost a two to one on them to win out. Mm -hmm. I don't hate it. Yeah. And then, like I said, too, it's also leads to a hedging potential. If they win as a 10 yep. point favorite this week, they'll probably be a seven and a half to nine point favorite next week. And they win that football game yep. as well against the Patriots, depending on what happens with Miami, who has to now play Dallas. So that has a tough game against the Ravens. That game, I could have a position with plus money on both teams' money line, and I could just sit back and uh, count some cash, or I could sit there, double down, I could ride, I have options. Um, we'll want to talk about that game a little bit more later because that game is on Saturday, but I will just mention quickly too, I did the same thing with the Kansas City Chiefs. Not sexy, plus 100 even money, but with the Las Vegas Raiders coming up, then a matchup against the um, Chargers to end the season. They have Raiders, Bengals. With Browning, I think like Browning is going to be legit again. Like we'll talk about this again. We're talking about the Steelers team shortly. Um, I'll live with that. And then the Chargers in the final week of the season, another situation where I could be setting up for a hedge or a you know double down or be in a good spot holding a ticket that I love. But let's talk some NFC because we could talk this kind of game theory all day long. NFC mm -hmm. playoff picture just so much more straightforward. Um, like you said, newbie, whether it be like the Ravens versus the field, like. The way that it is in the in the in my eyes and my power ratings, the 49ers are by far the best team in football. Like they're a tier of their own. Then I have the Ravens, Dolphins, Chiefs in a tier. Then I have the Browns, Birds, and the Cowboys in a tier. And then I think the Lions are yep. just below yep. them, newbie. Do you think that this NFC, right? Like you could have the Seahawks now sneak in. If the Saints win on Thursday, you know, they'll sneak in potentially. Um, the Falcons aren't technically dead there, but like, is it even kind of worth kind of discussing these things? Like, I know anything can happen any given Sunday, but like, there are clearly just four um, very good teams and then, you know, four pretty crappy teams to make the playoffs this year, right? Yeah, and and that's what you're looking at. And then, again, it's the 49ers and then everybody else. And it, and it's a pretty big gap between these two, the the, uh, the the 49ers and the next best team. For what it's worth, they went against most of the next best teams. And what did they do? They yeah. absolutely demolished them. Now, I know people, you know, they might say Kyle Shanahan, you know, the, the playoff choker or whatnot. He's never had the stable that he has. So as long as, you know, no injuries pop up, um, you know, again, it's not a foregone conclusion, but it really feels like it 
Um, so, so, you know, take that part out of the equation. I don't think anybody's beaten the 49ers in the NFC. So now you look at ways no. that you can make money elsewhere. Um, I told you a couple of weeks ago that the Eagles were going to lose the NFC East. And I still believe that they went from the one seed to the five seed in one fell swoop. And I know that you look at the ending schedule for them. There's no guarantee that they beat the Arizona Cardinals outright. Um, there's no guarantee that they're going to beat the Giants two games in a row when the Giants don't have anything to play for. And it seems like the Eagles aren't playing for much is, is the effort level that's being put out there week after week. Um, as far as the rest of the picture goes, that was a huge win for Seattle in their race. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's major playoff implications in that win last night. Uh, as you said, like, who cares about the NFC South? They're going to get a team in. Um, whoever gets to play them is going to feel pretty nice. But for me, man, it, it boils down to I will never lay prices in the future market. Minus 110, 49ers to win the NFC. Um, sure, you could have gotten better prices throughout the year. I don't see how they lose this conference, man. They they are that good, and I think the other teams have all gotten exposed. Like, every other team has a blueprint out there how to beat them. You thought the blueprint was out against the 49ers. They had that three-game skid. They come back retooled after their bye week, and if you go back and look at the, the episode that we had before their bye week, I laid out the numbers of Kyle Shanahan before and after his team has a break and they reevaluate the season. He is a subpar coach before the break. After the break, he puts up Hall of Fame win numbers. So uh, th this is just a wagon I'm not getting in front of. I've now been burnt two times in a row, even trying to get nice plus money prices fading that team. You tried to talk me off of it. Uh, I'm swearing it off. The comments got me this week, man. I'm not a 49ers hater anymore um, or, or detractor. I never was a hater. I agreed, you know, how great they were. But you won't be seeing any best bets against the 49ers for me the rest of the year. That's, that's, that's the best way to say it. Yeah, and I can't blame you. Like, the one thing I will say is if I have to watch Derek Carr play more than one playoff oh. game, even one, I will vomit everywhere. <laughs> and, like, yeah. I love how we both said we wanted Baker and the Bucks in. And what do they do? Baker puts on a show at Lambeau Field. I think I saw – I don't remember the stat exactly, but Baker Mayfield, I think, was the first quarterback in the history of Lambeau Field to put up the numbers that he did in Lambeau Field. We're mm. talking about one of the most prestigious places in the entire National Football League, Baker Mayfield, if any – opposing quarterback ever to come into that stadium to have like whatever that stat line for the rating that was a stat i think i got from the gm shuffle podcast shout out to that podcast but um yeah that was that was crazy but uh yeah no let's get into newbie we could talk more ram saints we're gonna do it to discuss the thursday night football game because that one has some yeah. implications but um i just lastly want to say though i'm not out on your birds newbie i just need to say that jalen hurts does not look healthy I think that their passing game is a little vanilla. They don't target the middle of the field as so often bad. as they should. But from a team perspective, like, they played such a gauntlet of a schedule from this middle of the season on. They started off with the vanilla schedule, then they played as hard of a schedule as you could imagine, and then they came back down to earth a little bit, but now they have a very easy end. I just think that that was maybe a sign of a battle-tested playing on primetime every other week, you know, having these tough games going across the country so far, so forth. But, um, we shall see how that breaks down. But newbie, Thursday night football. The Derek mm. Carr led Saints versus the Los Angeles Rams in LA. Current market laying four. The Rams are laying four. Total 46, 46 and a half, which makes sense. Two good offenses, mediocre defenses. We're in a spot right now, newbie, where we do not have to lay any points with Derek Carr, which makes you feel better about it because asking to cover a spread is just never the good thing. I lean toward points with Saints because I think that these teams are just very evenly matched. So, you know, you take the plus points here. Not really in love with it, Newbie. How are you doing this matchup on Thursday? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I find this pretty challenging. I think it's a, a spot on number. Rams minus four. That's about what my numbers would make it as well. Um, maybe closer to three and a half. But uh, I always do. As long as I don't have to lay points, you can talk me into betting the New Orleans Saints. But for me... I'm just kind of surprised. I know if there's any prop betters out there, uh, hop below in the comments, let us know what you're eyeing. But there's actually more props available for the Saturday games that we're going to be talking about than there are for this Thursday night football game. But one spot that I'm really looking to ISO in on, 
I think we're going to get a pretty favorable number on Taysom Hill. And I'm talking either yards or receptions. I wish I had a number so I could make it an official best bet. But uh, check it out on Twitter at Newbie Talks. I'll drop something uh, and reference this video or I'll hop below in the comments with you. Um, I, I want to maybe get it at any time touchdown just because that's going to be a nice price. But I think yards or receptions is the better way to go for Taysom Hill. The Rams, they, they just don't defend tight ends, really. They ask you to beat them elsewhere and uh they've allowed 25 or more yards to tight ends in 11 of their 14 games Taysom Hill's number is probably going to be well under 25 yards so uh, you know if we're talking about like an 11 and a half even a 15 and a half um anywhere below like 17 and a half is where I'm going to be betting Taysom Hill over his yardage if his receptions are at two and a half um, even if laying some juice, I, I would make that a bet. So I really want to get at Taysom Hill in this game. I think he's going to have a decent a, a decent day, especially with the question of Olave's health kind of up in flux. You know, they always like working Hill into the game plan a little bit more when, uh, when you see injuries pop up anywhere. So that's going to be my favorite play in this game. I hate that I don't have a number for you, but um, Taysom Hill is a bet that I'm going to be making because it makes a heck of a lot of sense. The matchup is there. The Olavi questions and him being worked in, obviously, in some different sets uh, for this week in preparation. On a short week, you go to a guy who knows the offense and knows the offense at basically every position. I think Taysom Hill is going to have himself a day. Yeah, the New Orleans Saints, like, they finally did well in the red zone the last two weeks. They played the Panthers and the Giants. Like, Derek Carr is not back. I want to uh, – I have a, <laughs> a good buddy who's a Saints fan. He's like, Derek Carr just played his best game of the season as a Saint. He played the New York Giants, buddy, coming off, you know, an amazing stretch of, you know, the Giants playing well. So, um, with that being said, yeah, you can never – I'm never going to be out on a Taysom Hill prop this team – needs him. They're a much better football team when he is involved in doing things. Um, but just overall game, Arching, I am very curious to see how it goes because I give Sean McVay such a major coaching edge. Like, talent for yeah. talent, I guess on defense, the Saints are definitely more talented. Offense, definitely the Rams. Coaching, definitely the Rams. So I would definitely be shocked to see Dennis Allen pull off an upset but four points, mm -hmm. a little too much. But Hard to talk too in detail about that game without the props, like Newbie said. I'm only seeing a couple numbers up, so like very difficult to get into there. But let's talk some Saturday NFL. First game of the day, 4.30 p.m. Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. Total 37. Bengals laying two on the road. Let's just put this in context quickly. J uh, Jake Browning's first NFL start was against the same Pittsburgh Steelers team at home. And this is when he looked like one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen. Since then, mm -hmm. Browning has been fantastic, albeit against two poor defenses. One very good defense. But if you watch that game, newbie, which I watched in full on Saturday. It was so great watching three games on Saturday. It was more his receivers making incredible plays than I thought him being like this amazing player. Like, Don't get me wrong. I am very impressed with these last three performances. I'm not so sold on him. But at the same time, now we have the... Steelers trotting out Mason Rudolph at quarterback. <laughs> Newbie, talk to me on this game. I don't see any prop numbers at all for this one, but like guns ahead yeah. maybe. Like, what are you thinking about this one? Yeah, I mean, the thing was, was it was a really nice potential buy sign on the, uh, on the Steelers this past weekend. They couldn't even cover the teaser. So, you know, that, that kind of worries me a little bit is the – uh, Tomlin as a dog thing is kind of coming to an end here. However, it, it is almost poetic. You know, Christmas week, you switch on over to Rudolph. Could Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer lead us to some covers here? I don't know, but I'm sure as hell not betting on it. You know, that that's a, that's a fun one for Twitter to throw out there. You know, you have to bet Rudolph because it is uh, you know, Christmas season coming up this week. But that's really the only case that you could probably make for the Steelers outside of the fact that there's familiar familiarity here however I'm not rushing to bet this game at all the only thing I will say is a couple weeks ago you and I both came on here and we were like Browning isn't just a flash in the pan like this dude can actually play and he's in an offense that really sets up nicely for him albeit now that offense is going to be without their biggest playmaker um so you know they so many questions I think these games will be good games on Saturday but I find them a little bit tough the bet here, even at two and a half, the only way I would look at it, Pittsburgh up in a teaser, falling for it again. It's just a, a 
perfect teaser mold. Um, that's the only way that you would bet it is because it is, it's an advantage one, and you can make a little dumb tweet about, hey, we're back in Rudolph, the red nose rain quarterback. So that th- that's the only way that you can bet this. But I'll be honest with you, man. I think the Bengals are for real. I think uh, these are buy signs week after week for me on the Bengals, and even laying points on the road. Um, as, as far as if you're just asking me to pick a winner, I think the Bengals do end up getting it done on Saturday night. Yeah, the Bengals get this done, being the team in the thick of the playoff race themselves. I mean, I think it's easy to forget because obviously, you know, everyone's just more fascinated about Jake Browning. But, like, we're talking about a Bengals team that is firmly fighting for a playoff spot. Like, firmly in, not just fighting for a playoff spot. If the season ended today, they're in the playoffs. They're 8-6. and six. However, yeah. I am going to disagree slightly. I, like, to me, I'm not going to – it's hard for me to say, like, I love this and not bet it because I haven't decided if I'm betting it yet, but it's Pittsburgh Steelers or bust. They got me on Saturday. I took them in a teaser plus seven and a half. They get out to a 13 nothing lead. I'm like, okay, like Mike Tomlin, a then shout out to Shane Steichen, the current favorite to win the coach of the year, comes back 30 nothing run, and the Colts win that football game. However, this is the prototypical Mike Tomlin spot. Mike Tomlin at home. In division, as an underdog, yeah. off a loss, sitting around 500. This is the kind of game that Mike Tomlin has won throughout his entire coaching career. Mitch Trubisky, I don't think we could overstate how bad he is. Like, we are talking about a season of a ton of backup quarterbacks playing. Mitch Trubisky is literally PFF graded as the 45th of 46 quarterbacks to play enough snaps to qualify this season. So we are talking about the worst of the worst. Could Mason Rudolph potentially be that 47? Yeah, he potentially could be. Um, but could he also potentially be, you know, 38? Is that enough to, you know, cover against this team that the Bengals, again, have been good with Browning? But the game without T. Higgins, they were really sluggish. And now they're having a game without Jamar Chase against the same defense that just shut them down recently. And if, again, not a trends guy, but we have had Zach Taylor there in Cincinnati for a while. We've obviously had Tomlin and Pittsburgh for a while. The Steelers do well against the Bengals in, within this division. So, I would definitely I'm, – I'm a little bit mad I missed the two-and-a-half for the uh, eight-and-a-half in the Wong teaser. But um, Steelers outright is definitely uh, on my eye. I hate that I bet on Mitch Trubisky. But, like, again, like, got to bet on the <laughs> Wong teaser advantage. But, you know, maybe I'll bet on Mason Rudolph and uh, hate myself a little bit less. Or probably – I'll probably hate myself more when I lose. But I'm Steelers or bust there, realistically. But the night game, dude, we talked about this game a little bit earlier. I think that we could get a little bit more yeah. deep into this one. Buffalo Bills coming off amazing performances, need to win out. I have tickets on them to win out. In Los Angeles against the Chargers, who have just fired Brand Staley. They have an interim head coach. Team got embarrassed national television, now back on national television, unfortunately for them. Total of 44, and the Bills are laying 10 and a half. This opened at 13. Bet right back down. The 13 opener was ludicrous for a number of reasons, if you ask me, newbie, but what do you think about it now? Like 10 and a half or just in general on the spot? Any props, anything you're eyeing or how you bet in this one? Dude, the crazy thing is, is that the sharpest book in the world over at, at Circa Sportsbook, this thing at what it would have been just before nine o'clock on the 17th, um, it actually touched 14. So talk about overreactions. You know, Dallas Cowboys get beaten down in a horrible spot for them against the Buffalo Bills. And we all watched the Chargers get absolutely mollywopped on a Thursday night football game. Um, the fact that that thing even touched 14, wild. And all we have seen since 14 is every sharp in the world lining up to drop their duffel bags down on the Chargers to back the fired coach theory here, folks. It's uh, one that's a profitable one year year over year and this thing continues to go down we're looking at 10 and a half is the highest that you can uh, that you can get if you're looking for uh, or, or the lowest excuse me that you can get if you're looking to back buffalo there's still some 11s out there but they're going to be gone um the thing is for me man i know it's the fire coach theory i know this i know that but keenan allen hurt for this chargers team um you know I know that every sharp in the world is rushing to bet on the Chargers, but what does Eric Pauly think? Like, what do you think? I, I don't want to <laughs> bet on the Chargers, especially now that the market's gotten steamed crazy that way. I don't want to lay double digits on the road with the Bills in a horrible spot for them. All the buy signs make sense for me on the Chargers. I just don't think the fact that this thing touched 14 and now when I get to it, it's going to be 10 and a half. 
that's that's rough for me to pull out some money and put yeah. put that on that. I know, um, you know, still it's double digits. It's the NFL. I just think um, that's tough, man. That's tough with what we saw from this Chargers team. Sure, their coach is done, but you know, there 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 were some players who, if you look at the locker room quotes, they've kind of said we're going to finish out the season, and, and that's the way that I look at this team. So the sharp spot makes sense for me. I just don't think I can bet it at this point. At 14, at 13 and a half, all right, you got me. But yeah. at 10 and a half, what do you think? It's something we've talked about at nauseum for all of our season-long listeners. Yes, there's a sharp side, but it's to a number. Like getting 14 or 13 mm-hmm. and a half, yes, I would have been Chargers without blinking. 10 and a half, probably lean Chargers. But newbie, I'm going to give out the squarest play in the history of square plays. And it's going Is to Is it the hit. over? And no, this is getting <laughs> Galaxy Big Brain newbie. We're Galaxy talking Big a, Brain hit me with it. We're talking for the entire weekend a three-team ten-point teaser. Char- I mean Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs, Philadelphia Eagles, all money line minus one twenty. If you did a money line parlay of all three of those teams and just did the money line without having a teaser, minus one sixty on DraftKings today. If you do a three-team 10-point teaser on DraftKings, minus 120 odds. You could get the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Philadelphia Eagles at PK each. Tell me that doesn't hit, Newby. The, uh, the other week when we did the uh, the 10-point wheel teaser, it worked out pretty damn well for us. You know, when we were playing in that, uh, what, we put like Navy football in there, the over, or the under. I, I don't remember what it was, but when you come with these 10-point, like, big brain plays, you you win me with hook line and sinker. So yes, let's ride. Let's and, and honestly, again, like joking aside, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Like, yes, is that a square play that if you went on a show and you told somebody, hey, I really like this 10-point teaser, they would laugh you off. They would say it's a sucker bet. They would say this, they would say that. But what you just did is take a money line parlay that everybody and their grandmother would put in yesterday and found a way to make the money make sense on it. So Sure, you know, you you can have all the the pro betters in the world tell you what a horrible ticket that is to hold, but for recreational players, every little half point matters. Every little 10 cents that you can save here and there matters, and EP just broke down a way that you get around laying juice on on a t on a on on a on a parlay. Um again, I know that parlays they're they're that hot and button term, but this man makes a living making money off of plays just like this. If you're not following him over on Twitter at Slime Action, uh, you just hate money because his NBA parlays have been insane as well. So parlays can be money maker when you do them smartly. And the way that you just broke down finding value, making the sense make sense. I love that, man. I think that is big brain stuff. So, uh, you know, haters be damned. Let's wheel some 10 points. <laughs> yeah, like you're telling, like, again, like anything could happen any given Sunday. I know it's not the best spot for the Buffalo Bills to cover 13 points, but this team needs to win the play in the playoffs, and we just saw them demolish a team, and we all saw the Chargers get demolished. Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes wants people to put some more respect on his name against a team that he is 9-1 and one <laughs> against in his last 10. And then you have the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts against a team that they are 10-0 and o against when hosting at the link. Like, guess all those things can very easily just blow up and be over with, but I, I, like, I bet it, like, if this is what's going to kill me and lose me, it was a 3% play. It's up on wager talk. That's going to, it's not for sale. I'm giving it out now. If that's going to lose me, you know, 3.6 units on, on the minus 120, I'll live. It's, it's, it's a wager, but uh, that's what I'm looking there. And lastly, I want to go into Stefan Diggs over 70 and a half receiving yards. It was actually 68 and a half before the show started, but I would, uh, it actually got steamed right away. Same exact thought process on, what we bet against the Chargers last week with the Devonta Adams prop that was sweat free. Chargers stink in the middle of the field and against wide receiver ones. Devonta, I mean, excuse me, Stephon Diggs makes a living in mm-hmm. the middle of the field and is the wide receiver one. I the other same narrative too was that the Vegas Raiders were running the hell of the football prior to that game, so maybe they were not going to throw it to Adams. They're going to run the ball. What happened? They threw it to Adams. Buffalo, what they do last week? Run the football only. What are they going to do this week? Go with the Stefan Diggs over the middle of the field. So I like it at 70 and a half. I like it more at 68 and a half, but literally got mm-hmm. steamed as I was sitting here waiting to get going. But that's going to wrap it up for me and, and, uh, and you, Newbie. Any final thoughts here? Because I think we did a great job getting over three games. 
talking playoffs and uh, giving you some actionable futures and bets to get in it now before everything gets a little bit crazier closer to Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing with this show, especially the Tuesday shows. May not come on with a giant, hey, bet these plays now. But if you've been paying attention all year long, you've gotten such great theory. You've gotten such great ways to make money as a recreational better or someone who wants to do this a little bit more seriously like EP and, the, and, and myself. So, um, yeah, man, it, you know, sure, we don't have the giant laundry list of bet all of these, but uh, hell of an episode here. And uh, hop below in the comments. Let us know if you agree, if you disagree, who's your playoff teams. And also, chirp me in the comments for that Arizona Cardinals play. They tried warning me, EP. I wish we had the live comments. They could have saved me live on air. But, uh, but we appreciate you, man. And have a Merry Christmas. Have a happy holiday, whatever you're celebrating. Even if it's just time with family, um, enjoy it. We will be back on Thursday, but, uh, you know, holiday season upon us. Yeah, we'll see you guys on Thursday. We'll be talking best bets. Maybe we'll be talking some Arizona Cardinals again. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. We appreciate you all. See you guys on Thursday.